I want to talk to you about uh, the number nine in football. The number nine, the big centre forward, OK? Because football's changing, we know that, and lots of clubs are playing with this false number nine. And even when they're not, they're playing with a, a number nine that's not your traditional Dean Ashton. It's not your, you know, your big, strong Oxford centre forward. Why Why has that build of player disappeared from the game? Very much like goalkeepers. Now they're also slender and more athletic for obvious reasons. But the shape and the look of a goalie has changed. Why, over the last... why are you staring at me like that when you say it? <laughs> Because you're the big old fashioned centre forward, right? <laughs> the big old burly. No, but you're not. You're not. You're not fat. You're not chubby. You're just. You're like. You're like an ox. You're tall. You're strong. You're yes. wide. Yeah, yeah. But we don't see that player anymore. Why is that? I think it, just because of the way teams want to play. I mean, I, I always thought, especially just towards the end of my career, Didier Drogba came into the Premier League, and I instantly thought, "Damn it, I, I'm. I can't do that." And now teams are going to want to play that way. Now teams are going to expect their centre forward to do what he did, which was he did everything, absolutely everything. Mm. He was big and strong and, and, and quick. He had great ability. He could hold the ball up and link the play. He could run the channels. He could get on the end of a, a, a clearance and make something out of it. He was intelligent out of possession and he could score goals. I, there's no way I can do that. Yeah, and, but- and actually at West Ham, there was a period where when I came back from injury and got back in the side, um, Alan Kirby, she was the manager, and he wanted to play with one up front. I hardly played. Carton Cole, Bobby Zamora played that role way more than me because mm-hmm. he wanted that player that could do all of that. And they could. They were better than me at that. I had different ap- attributes. But when you had two of you, you could split that and maybe have one that had more strengths and, and one that had the others. And I just think now, like, teams, I absolutely despise this false number nine. When people say false number nine, well, no, there's just not a striker there. It's not a false one. It's just there's no striker there or, or to what I would perceive as a, as a okay, striker. Well, look at Man United, right? So they had a number nine in Cristiano Ronaldo, an out-and-out striker that wouldn't supposedly never track back, wasn't a team player. When United defended, he wasn't part of it, etc. But he still scored lots and lots of goals. He yeah. had a ridiculously successful season for Man United. But there are still question marks over his role in that team. Why is that? I mean, because, a, a goal because, because job now is to score goals, right? That's what I. That's what I believe. That's what I've always believed. Why would you not want a player in your side that scores goals? Well, because now we've got this ideal, and Liverpool and City, and the way teams want to play is that you have to press from the front, you have to be aggressive out of possession, and that's all that kind of matters in a sense. You know, I I, I look at Bobby Firmino for it for an example, and I think I just feel sorry for him. Whenever I watch him, I feel sorry for him. I know he enjoys, and I think he does enjoy bringing players into the game, but in terms of that weight that you have on you as a, as a forward to score goals, mm-hmm. I just think that at times it does weigh quite heavy on him, even though when you watch him, he's incredible out of possession, the link-up play is gorgeous, but I just, I always watch him and I think, nah. Nah, I'm, well, I, I wouldn't you, be fussed about playing that When you see that Arsenal have got Gabriel Jesus, <clears throat> I'm guessing he's going to play down the middle. Yeah. But well, not, no. No. You think out wide? Well, only just because um, I know Tim Vickery said about that he'd spoken to you know Brazilian coach and he'd said actually where do you want to play and he said well I prefer out wide but I think he will I think he will play but, through the middle. but he won't play that role as it traditionally has been played in the past he won't be an out and out striker he'll have a no, job to do exactly. within that team exactly and and he'll probably have a bit more freedom to kind of go where he wants where he wants to go but do you think Holland will have that problem at City? Because the false number nine was, you know, obvious there. You've got an abundance of talent. You've got Riyad Mahrez, you've got, you've got Grealish, you've got Foden, you've got Sterling. So any of them can play that role. But with Haul- Haaland, they're going to have to just stick him down the middle. He ain't going to play out wide, we know that. So do you think City will start playing a different brand of football, perhaps, that we saw last year and the year before? Not massively, because they can't really, because teams only play one way against them. Teams don't come out and play and leave them space. They all just sit in deep and try and counter-attack against them so he's going to have to get his head around the fact that there's never any space where's he going to get space he's not going to find it in behind he's mm. going to have to I think playing for Manchester City you have to be one of the most patient forwards in the world you have to just be really patient really focused because you're waiting for that then split second to make you move and the ball will be there but De Bruyne will find you but you've got to be alert to that there'll be lots of oh I'll make the run Mm. Oh, I'll make that run. I'll make that run. Oh, it's just, it's tiring in terms of that concentration constantly. I think you'll find it hard okay. first season, but I just think when I think about, you know, say say Ronaldo left, who are Manchester United going to go and get? 
Where, mm. where are the forwards, the out and out forwards that they're going to get? Uh, let's get the phone lines and ask that very question. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. Leon's a Man City fan. Hello, Leon. Hi, Liam. Hello. How are you? How are you today? I'm very, very, very good. Thank you. Good man. What would you like to say? I think it, in a way, I think we're going about it the whole wrong way. I don't think the number makes a player. The player makes the number. What, why does somebody have to be a, na- a number nine to be a striker? You pick whatever number you want. Yeah, I think, well, especially like co- co- coaches, Leon, coaches now, there's a number for every position. So if you went and if you walked into any football club now and heard them talking, they talk about a number, as in, oh, he's a number eight, he's a six. Am I right in saying that originally there was no numbers at all? It was just the player's name on the back. No, you're no, wrong. I, think, I, I mean, think it's the originally, opposite, opposite way, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, there were there were numbers first. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I thought it was the other way around. No, I would imagine that back in the day there were just shirts with nothing on, but that was... Yeah. We're going back 100 years okay. or something. Well, <laughs> company was at number four for 10 years, and now Carlton Phillips is number four. It, it's just a number. And I don't care. Yeah, but when we I say... Play. Leon, when we say the number nine, we don't actually mean the player with a nine on his back. We mean that role within the team, the centre-forward, the out-and-out centre-forward down the middle. So he doesn't have to have a nine on his back. Right, because we've got, like, seven or eight players who are capable of going forward and getting those goals. So, I, I understand where it's, where it's coming from. There's a lack of the big, strong players. But at the same time, it's not really the play, the number that makes a player. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, even think, I don't even think necessarily it's a big, strong thing either. I think it's just that player that is his role is to score goals. His role is to... And only score goals. Not only score goals, but... That's his main role, yeah. is, to, is to score goals. Yeah, we don't ne- mean the number on the they're, back they're of not, his shirt. They're not buying Haaland because of what he does out of possession. No. And, and they don't care about the goals. You're right. Uh, Temmy's a Man United fan. Thanks, Leon. Hi, Temmy. Hi there, guys. Uh, great show as always. Thank you, man. How are you? Yeah, yeah I'm really good, thank you. Um, yeah, when I was listening in, it actually made me think that um, the lack of, you know, those old school number nines have actually affected the way that central defenders are now produced. And I go back to, like, Phil Jones and Chris Smalling, who I think Phil Jones in his late 20s, Chris Smalling in his early 30s. When they made their debuts, uh, Smalling was at Fulham, Phil Jones was um, at Blackburn. They made it against Chelsea, and they both had amazing debuts against Drogba. And that's uh, what kind of led to them getting signed for Manchester United. And they were really good at the start of their careers because they were playing against the big number nine. They were strong themselves. But now, because obviously that big number nine isn't in the game anymore, you know, you're playing against your slight, short players. That's actually affected those kind of central defenders that used to be. That's why, you know, they may not have been doing as well as people thought they would have you know people thought they were the new Rio Ferdinand and John Terry so yeah when you guys were mentioning about the big nine uh, the number nine that actually made me think about uh, it's actually changed the way central defenders play now yeah yeah I think the that, physicality is I, I think that's a good point yeah. I think because you were playing it against two forwards that would pretty much stay up there and play and now if you've not got anyone to mark who where do you go do you mm. go out of position I think that's that's a good point but I just think it'd be interesting to get your thoughts and, and other people's thoughts in terms of Who's realistically out there for Manchester United to get in Dibala terms of a forward? Is the player we've been linked to, but he's not a four, He's not a. He's not a striker. No, he's a. He's a. He's a ten. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein, Monday to Friday afternoon from four on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.